Hi, my name is Bryn Hughes, and today we're going to be talking about something you thought you already knew really well, pitch. What is it about these notes that makes you consider them to be related? If you said that they're all the same notes in different octaves, you're right. We think of these notes as the same in some capacity. Although I played several different keys on the piano, we would call them all C. This is called octave equivalence, and it's something that is considered to be part of many different kinds of music throughout the world. In many different kinds of music, pitches separated by octaves are typically considered to be equivalent in some sense. This is definitely true for common practice music and for post-tonal music. For example, in this familiar piece by Beethoven, all of these notes are called F and all of these notes are called C. The Fs and Cs appear in multiple octaves, but in some way we consider them all to be the same. Similarly, in this piece by Schoenberg, we have Fs and Cs appearing in multiple octaves. We would intuitively consider these to be equivalent as well. Octave equivalence is something you're probably very comfortable with if you've studied common practice music theory, and the concept applies to the analysis of post-tonal music as well. Now, I'd like to focus on another concept of pitch that you've likely thought about many times before. What's the difference between B sharp and C? Both use the same keys on the keyboard or the same frets on the guitar. Why do we bother using two different names for them? The answer, up to this point, has been context. We write B sharp and C for different reasons. For example, in the key of D flat major, what's the difference between D flat and C sharp? In this famous example by Chopin, we write D flat instead of C sharp because D flat is the tonic in the key. C sharp would have a much different functional meaning. Conversely, later in the piece, Chopin changes the key signature. In this passage, C sharp is the tonic and has a much greater meaning in the surrounding context than D flat does. But what about that Schoenberg piece we looked at earlier? Why does Schoenberg write D flat here and C sharp here? This passage is not in a key, so the perceptual difference between C sharp and D flat is much less meaningful. If I were to guess, I would say that Schoenberg wrote C sharps and D flats where he did because they formed more familiar intervals for the performer. But as listeners, the notational difference doesn't really matter. What I'm describing here is called enharmonic equivalence. When using 12-tone equal temperament, enharmonically equivalent pitches are those that are spelled differently but would otherwise be played with the same key on the piano. Enharmonic equivalence is useful for analyzing chromatic and post-tonal music when scale degree functions are not relevant or when composers intentionally play with the idea of ambiguity created through enharmonic equivalence. Now that we've laid out these two definitions, we should clarify a couple more. Pitch and pitch class. When we're talking about pitch, we're talking about a pitch that has a specific name and frequency. Think of C4 or middle C on the piano. Pitch classes are names for groups of notes that are octave equivalents. Think of all the notes called C. Pitch class integers are names that we use to describe octave and enharmonic equivalents. We use integers because when we're analyzing post-tonal music, it's often useful to assume octave and enharmonic equivalents. Integers help us express this more clearly. For example, all B sharps, Cs, and D double flats are members of the same pitch class, pitch class 0. We use the integers 0 through 11 to refer to these pitch classes. A visual of all 12 pitch classes laid out on a circle of semitones can be helpful. Here we have the pitch class letter names, and when we add the enharmonic equivalents, they are better expressed as integers like so. When we lay out pitch class integers in this way, we often refer to it as a clock face diagram because it resembles a clock. Get used to drawing these as they'll become very useful for helping to visualize some of the concepts in post-tonal analysis.